Good afternoon. My name is Kayla Mills, and this is my presentation for COM 2100 on how society's female demographic in specific is affected by social media. So if you're anything like me, you found yourself struggling with comparison at some point or another in your lifetime. You found yourself wishing you were skinnier, more muscular, prettier, etc. Although most every girl struggles with this, whether or not they have social media, I believe that social media today has played an increasingly large role in how these thoughts and feelings about oneself begin, sustain themselves, and affect the outcome of their impact on the individual. So as smartphones have become increasingly popular, the age at which an individual downloads social media is pretty young. I recently found that approximately 51% of 12-year-old kids use social media. For anyone under the age of 25, the prefrontal cortex is underdeveloped, meaning that um, people under the age of 25 are not as inclined to think logically towards solving problems and making decisions. So the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry tells us that the younger you are, the more reliant your brain is on its amygdala. The amygdala is associated um, with emotions, impulses, aggression, and instinctive behavior. So this implies that a young girl isn't so inclined to think logically and tell herself, oh, that's photoshopped, that's posed, or that's unrealistic when she's looking at a picture. Her idea of what a healthy woman should look like becomes distorted by social media's depictions. So the article titled, The Psychology of Social Media, suggests that the magnitude of likes are what demand attention. So, you know, the more likes a post has, the more attention it's given by an individual. It affects the individual's reward processing and social cognition and also promotes an imitative behavior. Um, from a young age, we begin to imitate those behaviors that are quote unquote rewarded by social media in today's time. One modern day ideal is the ideal to be thin. It's evident in today's films, magazines, and other various career fields. This ideal is a big factor in social media being considered a toxic mirror by some. Um, and by toxic mirror, we mean that social media portrays an image, an ideal body image, that causes people to question their looks and lose their sense of self-confidence. Modern day unrealistic beauty ideals are perpetuated by social media. Take Ariana Grande, Kim Kardashian, and Kendall Jenner, for example. They are a few of the most popular accounts on social media and their content is consistent of body objectification, unrealistic skin, unrealistic jaw lines, and unrealistic waist size, and so much more that's unrealistic. We see that Ariana Grande is number two at 230 million on Instagram. Kim is number seven at 214 million followers on Instagram. And Kendall is 11 at 158 million on Instagram. So although they're beautiful, they don't depict real life beauty. They promote an idealistic beauty that is highly unattainable to many other people. This negatively affects other women's personal self-image, their self-respect, their health, and their happiness or contentment. So the perpetuation of these ideals through social media have warped women's perception of what is beautiful. So much so that the American Society of Plastic Surgeons state that cosmetic enhancement procedures have increased by 200% since the year 2000. Cosmetic enhancement procedures can be surgical, including liposuction, breast and booty implants, tummy tucks, rhinoplasties, etc., or they can be non-surgical, including lip fillers, microblading, neurotoxin injections, which is just Botox, you know, etc. So from how does media impact body image and eating disorder rates, we learn that not surprisingly and unfortunately, eating disorders have also become more prevalent as a consequence of social media's portrayal of ideals. Eating disorders can include binging, purging, over-exercising, skipping meals, and extreme portion control, all as a means to becoming thinner and getting closer to the quote-unquote ideal that um, media has perpetuated. So like I mentioned earlier, from a young age, girls can believe that likes equal validation 
and they can also struggle with deciphering realistic images from modified images. And all of these things contribute to thoughts such as, I'm not skinny enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not muscular enough, etc. Fortunately, society has taken a step in the right direction by promoting body positivity. So although many are using this movement to justify their unhealthy habits, Cherry explained that its true purpose is to empower women no matter their size, abnormalities, um, disabilities, you know, what have you, and also challenge society's unrealistic beauty standards placed on women. So for the purpose of empowering women to be their healthiest and feel beautiful no matter what, I can 100% get behind this specific movement. In conclusion, here are my sources, and thank you so much for listening to my presentation on Mind, Body, and Media.